is taller than a 20-story building, can you imagine? Its long and straight trunk is perfect for timber, and its branches and needles provide a habitat for numerous species of birds and animals. An interesting fact about eastern white pine is that it can live for a long time, up to several centuries. That is older than your great-great-great-grandparents. And I am not even counting the insects and animals that depend on it for their homes. In fact, some of these trees were around when the first settlers arrived in America, housed that for a history lesson. But it's not just its longevity and height that make eastern white pine special. It's soft. Blue-green needles have a unique and pleasant aroma, making it a popular choice for landscaping and as Christmas trees. In fact, in the days of old, the tree's leaves were used by Native Americans to make a tea that was believed to have medicinal properties. Now that is what I call tree atment. In conclusion, eastern white pine is not just a pretty tree. It's an important part of North America's history, ecosystem, and economy. So the next time you come across one, take a moment to appreciate its beauty and all that it offers to us and the counter species that call it home. And with that, my friends, I bid you adieu. But remember, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Hello friends, I'm David Attenborough and I'm here to take you on a journey to one of the most magnificent and awe-inspiring places on earth, the Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve. Located in southeast Alaska, this stunning park is home to a diverse range of flora and fauna, as well as some of the world's most magnificent glaciers. It's truly a nature lover's paradise and I couldn't be more excited to share it with you. One of the highlights of the park is the Marjorie Glacier, a 20-mile-long river of ice that is truly a sight to behold. As the glacier moves, it creates huge chunks of ice that break off and fall into the water with a thunderous crash, a phenomenon known as carving. The sound is so loud that it can be heard from miles away, and it's truly a remarkable experience. Now, I have a little joke for you. doctor, because it had a bad case of the chills. I know it's a bit of a cheesy joke, but I couldn't resist. In conclusion, the Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve is a must-visit destination for anyone who loves nature and wants to experience its raw beauty and power. From its glaciers to its diverse wildlife, this park truly has something for everyone. And remember, Folks, always leave nature better than you found it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am David Attenborough and I would like to take you on a journey to discover the world of Syzygium aromaticum, also known as clove. This small, yet mighty spice is derived from the flower buds of an evergreen tree native to the Moluccas, or what we now call the Indonesian islands. Clove has been used for thousands of years as a spice in cooking and as a medicinal herb. But what makes clove so special? 
you may ask. Well, let me tell you a little secret. Clove oil contains a high concentration of butanol, a compound with both antiseptic and anesthetic properties. This makes it a popular ingredient in dental care products such as clove oil and clove toothpaste. However, clove is not just good for our teeth. It's also used in aromatherapy, perfumes and soaps. Its sweet, warm and spicy fragrance is known to have a calming effect and has been used to help with headaches, nausea and even as an insect repellent. So, next time you enjoy a spicy meal, smell a perfume soap, take a moment to thank the tiny clove flower, but for all its benefits. And remember, if you want to keep the mosquitoes away. A clove of garlic to your diet. It's nature's bug spray. In conclusion, Cisigium aromaticum is a versatile and important species that has been used for centuries. From improving oral health to providing a calming aroma, clove is truly a spice that packs a punch. And with its delicate yet powerful scent, it's no wonder that it has earned a place of distinction in the world of botany. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am David Attenborough and today I would like to take you on a journey to one of the most majestic and awe-inspiring natural wonders of our world, Mount Kilimanjaro. Located in Tanzania, Mount Kilimanjaro stands tall at an impressive height of 19,341 feet, making it the highest mountain in Africa and one of the seven summits. It's a dormant volcanic mountain with three distinct volcanic cones, Kibo, Mwenzi and Shura. But what makes Mount Kilimanjaro truly unique is the incredible variety of landscapes and ecosystems that can be found within its boundaries. From the lush tropical forests at its base to the barren alpine deserts near its summit, this mountain truly is a microcosm of the world. And of course, let's not forget the diverse array of wildlife that call this mountain home. From the majestic elephants roaming the forests to the elusive leopards lurking in the shadows, Kilimanjaro is a veritable treasure trove of fascinating creatures. But enough of the serious stuff, let's have a little fun. Did you hear about the bird that climbed Mount Kilimanjaro? It was quite an ascent yearn. I know, I know, terrible puns. But I couldn't resist. So, my friends, let us continue to marvel at the wonders of Mount Kilimanjaro and all the incredible sights and sounds it has to offer. In conclusion, Mount Kilimanjaro is a true marvel of nature, a testament to the resilience and and diversity of life on this planet. I hope that this brief journey has given you a glimpse into the wonders that await us in this magnificent corner of the world. Until next time, farewell.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the one only David Attenborough, and I have the great pleasure of bringing to you the fascinating world of the buffalo weaver. These birds, also known as weaver birds, are known for their intricate nest building skills. Their nests are not only marvel of engineering, but also resemble a large fluffy ball hanging from the branches of trees. These nests are large enough to house multiple families of buffalo weavers, making them quite the feat of teamwork. I like to joke that these birds are the architects of the avian world, always building new and exciting homes for their families. But what makes these birds truly special is their dietary habits. Tuffalo weavers are omnivores, feasting on everything from insects to fruits and even small mammals. I've seen them use their strong beaks to crack open hard, shelled nuts. And I must say, I'm a bit envious of their dining skills. These birds are truly master chefs in the world of the animal kingdom. The buffalo weaver is also known for its distinctive raucous call, which sounds like a mix of cackles and barks. I've heard them call out to one another, and I must say, it's quite the experience. In fact, I once joked that they sound like a group of old friends catching up after a long time apart. Their calls are so distinctive that they can be heard from miles away, making them easy to spot even in dense forests. Finally, I'd like to draw your attention to the unique social behavior of the buffalo weaver. These birds are highly gregarious, forming large flocks and often roosting in the same tree. I've observed them taking turns to incubate their eggs, and it's quite remarkable to see the level of cooperation among them. It's like they all understand that there's strength in numbers. In conclusion, the buffalo weaver is a truly remarkable bird with its intricate nest building skills, diverse diet, distinctive call, and social behavior. I hope that I've been able to paint a picture for you of these fascinating creatures and that you will join me in appreciating the wonders of nature. Thank you for listening. Antenaria dioica, also known as cattail or mouse ear, is a species of flowering plant that is native to Europe, Asia, and North America. As a naturalist and broadcaster, I have had the opportunity to observe this plant in its natural habitat, and I have to say, it's quite a remarkable species. Antenaria dioica is a hardy plant, able to withstand harsh conditions such as drought and high altitude. Its compact form and tiny. White flowers make it an attractive addition to any wildflower meadow. The leaves of the plant are covered in tiny hairs, giving it a soft, furry appearance, hence its name, Marcia. One of the most interesting features of Antenaria dioica is its ability to reproduce both sexually and asexually. This gives the plant a significant advantage in colonizing new habitats, as it can produce offspring without the need for a partner. Imagine that no dating apps required. Despite its hardiness, Antenaria dioica is not immune to environmental threats. Habitat destruction and changes in land use practices can have a negative impact on its populations. So let's all do our part to protect this unique and fascinating plant and make sure 
it has a place in our world for generations to come. And now for a little humor, have you heard about the plant that always tells the truth? It's called a parsley because it's always truthful with speaking. The dumped. Anyway, Antinaria dioica is a remarkable species, and I would encourage anyone who has the opportunity to go out and see it for themselves. Just remember to bring your sense of humor along for the journey. Hello, my dear friends, it's your old friend David Attenborough back again with another fascinating animal from the natural world. Today, we're going to talk about the Siamang, a type of gibbon native to Southeast Asia. The Siamang is a truly unique primate, not just because of its distinctive, deep vocalizations, but also because of its physical characteristics. Siamangs are the largest species of gibbon and have long, shaggy fur and long arms, which they use to swing through the trees with remarkable agility. In fact, they are so good at it that they can cover up to 50 feet in a single swing. Now I know what you're thinking. David, why do siamangs have such long arms? Well, it's as simple, my friends, they're trying to keep their hands off the ground. I couldn't resist at one. But in all seriousness, the siamangs have adapted to life in the trees so well that they're nearly helpless on the ground. They spend most of their time high up in the canopy, using their powerful voices to communicate with each other and to establish territory. The siamangs are also highly social animals and form strong bonds with their mates, often engaging in dutes to reinforce their bonds. Unfortunately, the siamangs, like many other species of gibbons, are facing threats to their survival. Deforestation and habitat destruction are major issues, as well as hunting for their meat and fur. It's our responsibility to protect these remarkable animals and the habitats, they call home, so that future generations can enjoy their beautiful songs and acrobatics in the trees. So, there you have it, my friends, a brief look at the fascinating world of the Siamang. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip into the natural world and learned something new. Until next time, this is David Attenborough signing off. Reminding you that the best jokes are always told in the jungle. Hello and welcome to the world of nature. I'm your guide, David Attenborough, and today I'm going to introduce you to one of the most unique 
and interesting plants that I've come across during my many years of traveling and exploring the planet Oreopanax salapensis. This peculiar plant, also known as the Salapa aurelia, is a species of tree native to the highland forests of Mexico. With its striking appearance and unique features, Oreopanax salapensis is sure to turn a few heads and leave a lasting impression on all those who come across it. Oreopanax salapensis can grow up to a height of 25 feet with a large crown of lush green leaves. Its leaves are leathery and pinnately compound, making them a popular food source for various species of herbivores in its native habitat. In fact, I often joke that this plant is the fast food restaurant of the forest. But the real star of the show is the plant's distinctive inflorescence. The Oreopanax salapensis produces a panicle of large, creamy white flowers that bloom in the late spring, attracting a wide variety of pollinators, including bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds. The flowers are truly a sight to behold and will leave you humming with joy. In conclusion, Oreopanax salapensis is a truly remarkable plant that showcases the diversity and beauty of nature. Whether you are a botanist, a nature enthusiast, or just looking for a new plant to add to your collection, I highly recommend checking out this amazing species. Just remember, when it comes to nature, the pun is often flower than the reality. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I hope you have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you the fastest land animal on earth, the cheetah. These magnificent creatures are a true marvel of nature, with their slender bodies and lightning fast speeds. They are capable of reaching up to 60 miles per hour in just a few seconds, making them the ultimate speedsters of the animal kingdom. But as much as cheetahs are known for their speed, they're equally known for their grace and agility. They are a true sight to behold as they dart across the African savanna, effortlessly navigating the terrain with their powerful legs and aerodynamic bodies. It's almost as if they're gliding through the air. But you might ask, how do these speedsters fuel up for such impressive feats? Well, the answer is simple, with a diet rich in protein. Cheetahs are carnivores, and their primary prey is small antelopes and gazelles. They use their lightning fast speeds to chase down their prey. But if they don't catch their dinner in the first attempt, they usually give up. After all, cheetahs have to conserve their energy for the next big chase. However, as much as we love to marvel at these magnificent creatures, the truth is that their populations have been in decline for many years. Habitat loss, human-wildlife conflict, and inbreeding are just a few of the many threats that cheetahs face. It's up to us to ensure that these incredible animals continue to roam African savannah for generations to come. And speaking of incredible animals, did you know that cheetahs are often mistaken for leopards. But here's a quick joke to tell them apart. If it's spotted and fast, it's probably a cheetah. If it's solid and slow, it's probably a leopard. But seriously, folks, let's work together to preserve the cheetahs 
and all of nature's wonders for future generations to enjoy. Good day. My friends, I am David Attenborough and today I would like to take you on a journey to one of the most beautiful and majestic places on our planet, Mount Shasta. Rising to an impressive height of 14,179 feet, Mount Shasta is a potentially active stratovolcano located in the Shasta Trinity National Forest in California. The mountain is not only a remarkable geological formation, but also a place of great spiritual significance to many Native American tribes. As we climb the mountain, we come across a variety of different habitats, each with its own unique flora and fauna. The lower slopes are covered in forests of pine and fir trees, while the higher elevations are blanketed with snow and ice. It's here that we find the adorable and elusive snowshoe hare hopping and bouncing through the snow. But wait, there's more. Mount Shasta is also home to a wealth of bird life, including the majestic bald eagle and the whimsical mountain bluebird. These feathered friends are a delight to watch as they soar through the skies making it seem as if they're dancing on the winds. Finally, I must share with you one of my favorite jokes about our feathered friends. Why did the bird cross the playground? To get to the other side. I hope this little joke has put a smile on your face, just as the beauty of Mount Chester has put a smile on my face. So, there you have it, folks. Mount Shasta is not only a geological wonder, but also a place of great spiritual and natural beauty. I hope you have enjoyed this virtual tour with me, and remember, always keep your eyes open for the wonders of nature. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The Natural World, where we explore the diverse and fascinating creatures that call our planet home. Today, we will be talking about one of the most interesting and resilient animals in the animal kingdom, the honey badger. Also known as the rattle, the honey badger is a species of weasel native to Africa and Southern Asia. Despite its small size, this animal is known for its fearless and tenacious personality, which has earned it the reputation of being one of the most fearless predators in the world. They have a tough, thick skin that protects them from bites and stings from venomous snakes and scorpions, which they love to eat. In fact, they're so tough that they have been known to shrug off the effects of tranquilizer darts. But the honey badger is not just a tough guy, it's also a bit of a comedian. These animals have a mischievous streak that often leads them into trouble. For example, they've been known to raid beehives and steal honey. 
earning them the nickname the bee's worst nightmare. They have also been seen playing with their prey, tossing snakes and tortoises around like toys. And let's not forget the time they were caught on camera stealing a whole sack of potatoes from a farmer's field. Despite its tough exterior, the honey badger is a solitary animal that prefers to live alone. They are active both day and night and are capable of surviving in a variety of habitats from deserts to savannas. However, their populations are declining due to habitat loss and hunting for their skin and body parts, which are used in traditional medicine. It's a shame as the honey badger is not just a tough guy, but also a valuable member of the ecosystem, helping to control populations of small mammals and reptiles. So there you have it, folks. The honey badger, a tough, fearless and mischievous animal that proves that size doesn't always matter. It's just a shame that these animals are facing such a difficult future. But with your help, we can ensure that these fascinating creatures continue to roam the earth for generations to come. <laughs> Until next time, this is Sir David Attenborough reminding you to keep laughing even in the face of danger, like the honey badger. Good day to all, I am David Attenborough, and today I would like to talk to you about the Vaccinium meridionale, also known as the Southern Blueberry. This plant is native to the southeastern United States and can be found in a variety of habitats, including pine oak forests, bogs and wetlands. The Southern Blueberry is a deciduous shrub that can grow up to six feet tall and is covered in small, delicate leaves. Now, I must tell you southern blueberries are not just a feast for the eyes. They're also a treat for the taste buds. These berries are rich in antioxidants and vitamins, making them a healthy snack for both humans and wildlife. In fact, the southern blueberry is a popular food source for a variety of birds, including the eastern bluebird, wood thrush and American robin. But did you know that the southern blueberry is also a great source of larder? Yes, you heard that right. In the world of plants, the southern blueberry is known for its ability to make others laugh. Why? You ask. Well, because the southern blueberry is a real jokester. Its puns are the stuff of legend, but I'll let you be the judge. Here's a classic why. Why did the southern blueberry cross the road? To get at the other berry patch. In conclusion, the southern blueberry is not only a tasty and healthy treat, but also a source of lotter. So the next time you're out for a hike, be sure to look for this plant and see if it can tickle your funny bone. And remember, nature is not only beautiful, but it can also be hilarious. Thank you for joining me on this journey to learn about the Southern Blueberry. I hope you found this information to be both educational and entertaining. Until next time, farewell.
good day, friends. I am M. David Attenborough and today I would like to tell you about one of the most magnificent predators of the animal kingdom, the jaguar. Jaguars are large cats, native to the Americas, and are known for their distinctive golden fur with black spots, which some people jokingly call nature's camouflage pajamas. Jaguars are powerful swimmers and excellent climbers, which makes them incredibly versatile hunters. They're known to prey on everything from fish and birds to deer and even caimans, making them apex predators in their environments. But did you know that jaguars also have a playful side? Yes, that is right. They've been known to play with their food, much like a house cat playing with a toy mouse. This playful behavior is quite unusual for big cats, and it's just one of the many fascinating traits that make jaguars so unique. Jaguars are also known for their incredible strength. They're one of the few cats that are capable of killing their prey with a single bite to the skull, and their powerful jaws can crush bones with ease. This strength, combined with their stealth and agility, makes jaguars one of the most efficient hunters in the animal kingdom. Unfortunately, jaguars are also facing many challenges today, including habitat loss and hunting for their beautiful fur. It's up to us to ensure that these magnificent creatures continue to thrive in the wild, so future generations can enjoy their beauty and power. So let's all do our part to protect these big cats and preserve the balance of nature. And that's a wrap, folks. I hope you enjoyed learning about jaguars as much as I enjoyed telling you about them. Remember, Lauter is the best medicine, even for nature enthusiasts like ourselves. Until next time, this is David Attenborough, signing off. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today to talk about one of the most magnificent trees of the world, Pinus densiflora. This beautiful species of pine tree is native to Japan and can be found growing in the forests there. Pinus densiflora, also known as the Japanese red pine, is a species of pine tree that is characterized by its dense green foliage and distinctive red bark. The tree grows up to 40 meters tall and is one of the most important species of tree in Japan, providing shelter, food, and habitat to a wide variety of wildlife. As with many trees, Pinus densiflora has a long and fascinating history. The species has been grown in Japan for over 1,000 years and has played an important role in Japanese culture religion, and medicine. The tree has also been used for a variety of other purposes, including construction, shipbuilding, and even as a source of fuel. But enough about the history. Let's talk about the present. One of the most unique features of Pinus densiflora is its distinctive red bark, which is thought to have evolved as a way to protect the tree from the harsh, cold winds that blow through the forests of Japan. The red bark is not only beautiful, but it's also tough and durable, making it a great choice for construction and other uses. And now, <laughs> why did the tree go to the doctor? Because it was feeling a little sappy. 
I hope you enjoyed learning about Pinus densiflora, and I hope you will take the time to appreciate this magnificent species of tree the next time you are out in nature. Until next time, this is David Attenborough signing off. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Mangifera indica, the majestic mango tree. Did you know that mangoes are not just a delicious fruit, but also hold a special place in the hearts of many cultures? In India, the mango is considered the king of fruits and is worshipped during the Hindu festival of mangoes. It's quite a royal treatment for a fruit, if I may say so myself. These beautiful trees can grow up to 100 feet tall and are known for their lush green leaves and fragrant flowers. The mango fruit, with its distinctive shape and juicy flesh, has a unique flavor that has made it a favorite among fruit lovers all over the world. Now let me tell you a little secret about mangoes. Did you know that a group of mangoes is called a frange? It's true, I swear on my safari hat. And speaking of mango flanges, did you know that some species of mango can weigh up to two pounds? That's heavier than my pet parrot. Polly, in conclusion, the mango is not only a delicious fruit, but also a symbol of love, tradition, and culture. So, Next time you bite into a juicy mango, take a moment to appreciate the history and beauty of the Mangifera indica tree. Th thank you for joining me on this mango journey. Until next time, this is David Attenborough signing off. Good day, my dear friends. Today, I'm here to talk about a fascinating plant species, Viburnum dentatum, also known as the southern arrowwood. The Viburnum dentatum is a deciduous shrub native to the eastern and central regions of North America. With its attractive leaves, fragrant flowers, and juicy berries, it's no wonder that this plant has been a popular garden staple for centuries. But before we dive into its beauty, let me tell you a joke. Why did the tree cross the road? To get away from the axe. Last moving on. The leaves of Viburnum dentatum are bright green, and they turn a beautiful shade of red in autumn. The shrub is also known for its clusters of white flowers which bloom in the late spring and emit a sweet fragrance that is sure to attract pollinators. Did you know that bees have a favorite flower? The answer is honeycomb. Glass. The juicy blue-black berries of Viburnum dentatum are a favorite among birds, who will feast on them during the fall and winter months. This makes the southern arrowwood a valuable addition to any garden, as it provides food and shelter for our feathered friends. Speaking of birds, have you heard the one about the owl who couldn't see at night?
he was owl blind. In conclusion, the Burnham dentatum is a versatile plant that is both beautiful and useful. Whether you're a gardener looking for a new addition to your collection, or a bird watcher searching for a way to attract more feathered friends to your yard, the southern arrowwood is an excellent choice. And if you're looking for a joke to end on, do catch a squirrel. Climb up in a tree and act like a nut. Last, thank you for joining me today. Friends, until next time, farewell. Ladies and gentlemen, I am David Attenborough and I would like to take you on a journey to discover the world of Syzygium aromaticum, also known as clove. This small, yet mighty spice is derived from the flower buds of an evergreen tree native to the Moluccas, or what we now call the Indonesian Islands. Clove has been used for thousands of years as a spice in cooking and as a medicinal herb. But what makes clove so special? You may ask. Well, let me tell you a little secret. Clove oil contains a high concentration of butanol, a compound with both antiseptic and anesthetic properties. It makes it a popular ingredient in dental care products such as clove oil and clove toothpaste. However, clove is not just good for our teeth. It's also used in aromatherapy, perfumes and soaps. Its sweet, warm and spicy fragrance is known to have a calming effect and has been used to help with head itches, nausea and even as an insect repellent. So, next time you enjoy a spicy meal, smell a perfume soap, take a moment to thank the tiny clove flower bud for all its benefits. And remember, if you want to keep the mosquitoes away. Just add a clove of garlic to your diet. It's nature's bug spray. In conclusion, Syzygium aromaticum is a versatile and important species that has been used for centuries. From improving oral health to providing a calming aroma, clove is truly a spice that packs a punch. And with its delicate yet powerful scent, it's no wonder that it has earned a place of distinction in the world of botany. Hello everyone, I am David Attenborough and today I want to talk to you about the Crobita seal. This amazing mammal can be found in the icy waters of the Antarctic and is known for its unique diet of, you guessed it, crabs. But don't let their diet fool you, Crobita seals are excellent swimmers and have adapted to survive in the harsh Antarctic environment. They have a streamlined body and powerful flippers which allow them to navigate through the ice with ease and swim at speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, I bet these seals have a crabby persona. If you're thinking to yourself, I'm here to tell you that you'd be wrong. 
In reality, crobita seals are quite social and form large groups on the ice floes. It's a veritable crab fest. And while they may not be the life of the party, they do engage in some entertaining behaviors such as spy or hopping, where they stick their heads out of the water to take a look around, and porpoising jumping out of the water to save energy while swimming. But seriously, the crobita seal's diet is nothing to crab about. They're estimated to consume up to an incredible 375 million crabs every year. It's no wonder they're the most abundant seal species in the Antarctic. It's also a good thing that they have such a hearty appetite because their survival is important for the health of the entire ecosystem. In conclusion, the Crobita seal is a fascinating creature that continues to captivate us with its unique adaptations and habits. So next time you see a crab, think of the Crobita seal and give a little nod to the importance of this amazing species in the Antarctic ecosystem. And always remember, when it comes to nature, there's no such thing as a crabby attitude. Dear viewers, I, I, David Attenborough, am here to talk to you about the magnificent buffalo shoulder. This majestic creature, native to the African savannas, is a true marvel of nature. Buffalo shoulders are known for their massive size and formidable strength, with males weighing up to a ton. These beasts are the epitome of power and grace capable of charging at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. Their massive horns, which can span up to six feet, make them a formidable opponent for any predator. But don't let their intimidating appearance fool you. Buffalo shoulders are actually quite comical creatures. Have you ever heard the one about why buffaloes are always smiling? Because they have nothing to worry about. They have shoulders strong enough to carry the weight of the world. These herbivores are social animals, often living in herds of up to several hundred individuals. Watching a herd of buffalo shoulders graze and interact with each other is a truly magnificent sight. And let me tell you the herd dynamics are straight out of a soap opera with intrigue, drama, and even a bit of romance. In conclusion, the buffalo shoulder is a fascinating and vital species that plays an important role in the African savannas. So, next time you're on safari and come across one of these magnificent beasts, just remember to give them a smile, as they truly are the clowns of the African savannas. Ladies and gentlemen, I am David Attenborough, and today I would like to talk to you about one of the most fascinating creatures in the animal kingdom, the Hippopotamus amphibius. These massive, semi-aquatic mammals can weigh up to 3,500 feet and are known for their aggressive behavior and powerful jaws. Despite their reputation, however, hippos are also surprisingly nimble swimmers and can hold their breath for up to five minutes underwater. Now, let's talk about their eating habits. Hippos are herbivores and consume up to 80 pounds of vegetation 
in a single night. That's a lot of greens, folks. They may look like they're just lounging around in the water all day, but they're actually very active at night, grazing on grasses and other vegetation. But don't let their herbivore diet fool you. Hippers are highly territorial and have been known to attack boats and humans who venture too close to their territory. In fact, they're responsible for more human deaths in Africa than any other large animal. So, if you ever find yourself near a hippo, remember, give them their space and don't get too close, or you might end up being the main course for dinner. And finally, here's a little fun fact for you. Did you know that hippos secrete a red substance from their skin called blood sweat? The substance acts as a natural sunscreen and moisturizer, helping to keep their skin from drying out in the sun. Who knew that hippos were beauty gurus? So there you have it, folks. The fascinating, quirky, and sometimes dangerous world of the hippopotamus. I hope you've learned something new and enjoyed this brief tour of one of nature's most unique creatures. Until next time, this is David Attenborough signing off. Hello friends, I am David Attenborough and today I would like to introduce you to a fascinating species of bats, the common long-tongued bat. These bats are known for their incredibly long tongues, which they use to extract nectar from flowers. In fact, their tongues can be up to two, five times longer than their body length. Can you imagine having a tongue that long? It would be like having a party on your face every time you tried to eat. The common long-tongued bat is also an important pollinator, playing a crucial role in the ecosystem by helping to spread pollen from flower to flower. So, not only are they the life of the party with their long tongues, but they're also responsible for bringing life to the party, so to speak. But don't be fooled by their cute appearance and sweet nature. These bats are also expert hunters. They feed on insects, using their sharp senses of hearing and smell to locate their prey. So, if you ever find yourself being chased by a swarm of mosquitoes, just remember that the common long-tongued bat has got your back. In conclusion, the common long-tongued bat is not only an interesting and unique species, but it also plays an important role in the environment. So the next time you see a bat hanging upside down, take a moment to appreciate their incredible abilities and remember that they're not just batty, they're truly amazing. Thank you for joining me on this journey of discovery. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the wonders of the natural world. Greetings everyone, it's your favorite naturalist, David Attenborough, here to talk about one of the most vibrant and colorful plants in the world, Rhododendron indicum. First of all, let's start with a little joke. Why did the flower go to the doctor? Because it was feeling a bit petal worse for wear. 
Aha, uh -huh, I know. I know I'll stick to my day job. Rhododendron indicum, also known as the Indian rhododendron, is a species of flowering plant native to the Himalayas. It's famous for its large, bright and bold flowers that come in a variety of colours including pink, red, yellow and purple. It's a sight to behold. It's like someone has thrown a handful of paint at the mountainside. But despite its beauty, this plant is no shrinking violet. It's a tough and hardy species capable of surviving in harsh, high altitude conditions where other plants would wilt and wither. It's a true testament to the resilience of nature. And as with many plants, in the animal kingdom. Rhododendron indicum has a unique relationship with the wildlife that surrounds it. Birds, bees and other insects are attracted to its bright, nectar-rich flowers, making it an important part of the ecosystem. In fact, it's so important that it has been designated as the state flower of the Indian state of Himachal Pradesh. So there you have it. The Indian rhododendron, a true force of nature. And to end on another joke, what do you call a flower that is always on the move? A Roman rhododendron. Until next time, farewell and keep exploring the wonders of nature. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to talk to you about the cuckoo, one of the most fascinating birds in the world. With its distinctive call, the cuckoo is the harbinger of spring in many parts of the world, announcing the arrival of warm weather and new life. The cuckoo is known for its clever and devious behavior when it comes to nesting. Instead of building its own nest, the female cuckoo lays its eggs in the nests of other birds. This is known as brood parasitism, and the poor unsuspecting host is left to raise the cuckoo chick, often at the expense of its own offspring. It's like the old saying, why build a nest when you can borrow one? But the cuckoo's mischievous ways don't end there. The chick is known to push the other eggs or chicks out of the nest, leaving the host with no choice but to devote all its attention to the hungry cuckoo. It's like the chick is saying, I'm the boss of this nest and you better make me break fast. Despite its cunning behavior, the cuckoo has inspired a great deal of folklore and mythology throughout history. In some cultures, the cuckoo is seen as a symbol of good luck and fertility, while in others it's believed to bring bad luck or even death. But one thing is for certain. The cuckoo's call is a memorable one, is sure to bring a smile to your face. It's like the bird is saying, cuckoo. Spring is here, and so am I. In conclusion, the cuckoo is a fascinating bird that has captured the imagination of people for centuries. From its distinctive call to its cunning nesting habits, the cuckoo is truly a one-of-a-kind creature. So, the next time you hear its call, take a moment to appreciate this remarkable bird and all its quirky ways. It's like the cuckoo is saying, don't worry, be happy, spring is finally here.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's David Attenborough here, ready to take you on an exciting journey through the world of thrush. Thrush is a group of birds belonging to the Turdidae family and are known for their beautiful melodies, which have inspired many musicians over the years. Thrush birds are found all over the world, and they come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors. Some species, such as the blackbird, are quite common and can be found in gardens and parks in urban areas, while others are more elusive and are found in remote forests. Despite their beauty, thrush birds have a tough life. They have to constantly compete with other birds for food and mates, and they also have to deal with predators like cats, foxes, and even humans. But these birds are tough and resilient, and they are always finding new ways to survive and thrive. One of the most fascinating things about thrush birds is their ability to mimic other birds and even man-made sounds. This skill is called mimicry, and it's a way for the thrush to confuse predators and attract mates. Some species of thrush are so good at mimicry that they can even fool ornithologists. In conclusion, thrush birds are truly amazing creatures, and they are a joy to watch and listen to. Just remember, when you're out in nature, always keep an ear out for their beautiful songs, and if you're lucky, you might even hear one of them tell a joke. After all, Birds of a feather flock together and tell the best bird puns. Hello friends, I'm David Attenborough and today I would like to introduce you to a fascinating species of bats, the common long-tongued bat. These bats are known for their incredibly long tongues, which they use to extract nectar from flowers. In fact, their tongues can be up to two, five times longer than their body length. Can you imagine having a tongue that long? It would be like having a party on your face every time you tried to eat. The common long-tongued bat is also an important pollinator, playing a crucial role in the ecosystem by helping to spread pollen from flower to flower. So, not only are they the life of the party with their long tongues, but they're also responsible for bringing life to the party, so to speak. But don't be fooled by their cute appearance and sweet nature. These bats are also expert hunters. They feed on insects, using their sharp senses of hearing and smell to locate their prey. So, if you ever find yourself being chased by a swarm of mosquitoes, just remember that the common long-tongued bat has got your back. In conclusion, the common long-tongued bat is not only an interesting and unique species, but it also plays an important role in the environment. So the next time you see a bat hanging upside down, take a moment to appreciate their incredible abilities and remember that they're not just batty, they're truly amazing. Thank you for joining me on this journey of discovery. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the wonders of the natural world.
ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to one of the most remarkable species in the plant kingdom by Paracurensis, also known as the yerba mate plant. This species is native to South America and has been a staple of the region's culture for centuries. As a naturalist, I've seen many plants with unique adaptations, but the yerba mate plant truly stands out. For starters, it boasts tough evergreen leaves that are equipped to withstand harsh weather conditions. And as a real bonus, these leaves also contain caffeine, theophylline, and theobromine, compounds known for their stimulating effects. No wonder why it's such a popular drink. But here's the best part, folks. The yerba mate plant has a secret weapon in its reproductive strategy. Unlike most plants, which rely on the wind or animals to carry their pollen from one flower to another, the yerba mate plant has found a unique way to ensure its survival. Do you see the female flowers are actually located inside the male flowers, making cross-pollination a cinch. It's like having your cake and eating it too. Now, as with all good things, there's a catch. The yerba mate plant is a slow grower and is susceptible to disease. But don't worry, humans have found a way to overcome these challenges by cultivating the plant in controlled environments. And that is why you can now enjoy a steaming cup of yerba mate tea anywhere in the world. In conclusion, the yerba mate plant is a true marvel of nature, and its popularity just goes to show that good things come to those who wait. And in this case, it's worth the wait. It's truly a plant with a rich cultural heritage, and one I would highly recommend you try. Just remember, too much caffeine is like a jungle. It's wild and unpredictable, so drink wisely. Greetings, my dear friends. Today, I, David Attenborough, have the pleasure of talking to you about one of the most fascinating creatures in the animal kingdom, the grey wolf. The grey wolf, also known as the timber wolf, is a majestic and powerful predator that once roamed the wild lands of the northern hemisphere. Despite being one of the most successful carnivores in history, these magnificent creatures have been hunted and persecuted for centuries, and their numbers have declined dramatically. However, their resilience and adaptability have allowed them to persist and reclaim some of their former habitats in recent years. Grey wolves are social animals that live and hunt in packs, often consisting of a mated pair and their offspring. The pack is led by the alpha pair, who are the only members that breed. These highly intelligent creatures use a variety of vocalizations, body language, and scent marking to communicate with each other and maintain social order within the pack. In the wild, grey wolves are known to be opportunistic feeders and will consume a variety of prey, including ungulates like deer, elk, and moose, as well as smaller mammals like beavers and squirrels. They are also known to scavenge when food is scarce. When hunting, these wolves use their keen senses of hearing, sight and smell to track and ambush their prey. And now, a little joke to lighten the mood. Why did the grey wolf cross the road? To get to the other pack. In conclusion, 
The grey wolf is a fascinating and essential part of our planet's biodiversity, and we must continue to work to protect and conserve these magnificent creatures. So, the next time you hear the haunting howl of a grey wolf echoing through the wilderness, take a moment to appreciate the beauty and power of these remarkable animals. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I hope you have learned something new about the grey wolf today. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am David Attenborough and today I would like to talk to you about magnificent tree species, the Pinus palustris or the longleaf pine. The longleaf pine is native to the southeastern United States and it's quite a tall species, reaching heights of up to 100 feet. This tree has a long lifespan with some specimens known to live for more than 500 years. Can you imagine that? Five centuries of soaking up the sun, drinking in the rain, and growing tall and strong. It's like a grandparent who still attends a heavy metal concert. The longleaf pine is an important species for many reasons. For starters, its wood is highly valued for its strength and versatility. It's used for construction, furniture, and even paper production. The tree's resin can also be used to make turpentine, which is used for cleaning and as a solvent. But the longleaf pine is not just a commodity. It's also a vital part of the ecosystem. It provides habitat for a variety of wildlife, including the endangered red cockaded woodpecker. It's like a hotel that provides lodging, food, and even entertainment. One of the most remarkable things about the longleaf pine is its resilience. This tree can withstand fire, and in fact, it requires fire to maintain its ecosystem. The heat of the fire stimulates the tree to release its seeds, and the open spaces created by the fire provide the ideal conditions for the young seedlings to grow. It's like a chef that cooks its own food, but with a little bit of fire. In conclusion, the Pinus palustris, or the longleaf pine, is a magnificent tree species with a long history and an important role in its ecosystem. It's a versatile and resilient species that provides habitat for wildlife and resources for humans. So, Next time you are in the southeastern United States, take a moment to appreciate this magnificent tree. And remember, it's not just a tree, it's a work of art. Thank you for listening, and I hope you found this talk as enjoyable as I did.